welcome to Racing to Win, the show where we preview Hong Kong racing. It's the weekend edition, which means it's Sha Tin coming up on Sunday. Ten race program, and it's a good quality card as well. The first and normal start time of one o'clock. Joined in the studio today by Paul Lally and Tom Wooden. Tom, that last race is an absolute ripper. It is, Mark. It's uh, certainly up for just about race of the season. That uh, final race, it's got the golden scenery going around it. It's uh, the Irishman, uh, packing victory, Keefe, Navas too, and down towards the bottom, Galaxy Witness, who was a very exciting runner last season. So we'll see if he progresses up to 1,600 metres in time. We will indeed. He resumes for his first start this season. Paul, are there jackpots? Yeah, there are. There's two jackpots, uh, races 6 and 10. Uh, there's a million going into the uh, quartet and first four uh, merge pools in those two races, so pretty good jackpots. And all in all, it's a really good card, isn't it? There's good races right for out. There is. It's a mixed card, five and five. We'll get to the meeting details in just a moment. But firstly, we do have a scratching to report. Race eight, number two, California Rad won't be making his racetrack return on Sunday. He's replaced by Atomic Force Alfie Chan aboard for Casper Found. So that is the information for the eighth race. The meeting details themselves, and we line up this way for Sunday. Five and five on the A course, and five races on the all weather. First at one o'clock, it's a bird meeting, different sort of bird breeds, and at the feature races, the Chinese General Chamber of Commerce Cup and the Chinese Recreation Club Cup. But our two focus races are races three and ten, the Egret Handicap and the Swan Handicap. The third race, class one, all weather. Event, a winning dream, a top of the book, two-time winner, uh, second up and is coming to the All Weather for his first time. Campione, unbeaten track and distance, keep you warm's best form has been at Happy Valley. Silver Fig is a four-time winner first up and a five-time winner course and distance. Grateful Hearts had a stable change from Danny Shum to Chris So and both Majestic Star and We The South come up in grade. The speed map here, Tom. As we head across to the waters, expected to be good, which is usually the case with a horse like Campione in the field. Yeah, he should be able to run along at uh, good tempo in front. Uh, winning Dreamer, he's uh, he's been handy in the past, but he was sort of uh, midfield a little worse last uh, start, uh, was uh, Winning Dreamer. And then you've got uh, We the South, who's got uh, some pace, uh, Paul, for Wagner Borges from Barrier 3. Yeah, and uh, look, Winning Dreamer, I think, from Barrier 1, will be a little bit closer. Silver Fig, uh, he's the fresh horse that uh, always gets back, so... We know he should be at the back, the grey, and Grateful Heart hasn't shown too much speed recently either. That is a look at the speed map for the first race pre preview here on Racing to Win. Vincent Hose had a terrific start to the season, and his ride in the third race is the top weight winning dreamer. Here he is with Nick. Vincent, winning dreamer is a horse that you know extremely well. I think you've only ever missed two rides on this horse. Um, he'll have his first run on dirt this weekend. Um, he's an interesting runner in that third race of the day. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll give it a try anyway, because uh, he always, you know, sort of performed well on, on a, at the trials on the third. So, um, yeah, I think Mr. Law want to give it a try. Uh, and fortunately, we draw one. So, you know, of course, it, at the moment for 1,200 on the third, he might not have the speed to be, you know, to, to lead or anything. but. You know, at least he, he can keep up with the pace. Uh, first half of the field uh, with gate one is easier for him to do that. And, uh, you know, he, he, he tend to have a, you know, at, at a getting cover and he's still uh, very strong to the line. So, uh, yeah, I think he, he also have a chance if he, if he, uh, if he, sort of perform as the same as, as the trials, you know. He's a six-year-old, Vincent. I mean, as you say, he referenced the fact he has trialled well on, on the dirt. Um, what's been the thinking with not trying it before now? Um, I mean, it seems logical, I suppose, but then I guess he's been such a good turf horse, hasn't he? Yeah, uh, you know, we have to deal with either his rating will be, you know, not many races for him, or either go into Group 3 or something which is uh, which is a tougher opponent uh, so of course even with the handicap is still pretty tough so um, you know give it a try on the third uh, won't harm for sure is that a concern in your mind the fact he has got to lump the big weight I mean he has gone up the 16 pounds on his last run I guess that's, that's a fair impost isn't it yeah definitely but he's he's a big boy so you know even even though his carry a bit heavier he can I think he can manage that 
Yeah. He's been a really special horse for you too, this this guy. What is it you think that, that, that sort of makes you and he click? I mean, you, you've obviously got good relationships with a number of horses, one very good one, but this horse you've always had a, a really good affinity with. Yeah, I'm glad uh, Mr. Law kept me on for sure, for the support and the owner happy for me to ride him all the time. And, and he is a lovely horse to handle, a uh, lovely horse to ride, very straightforward. Uh, you know, even though he's still sometimes in the field, he loses a little bit of confidence around horses. But he, you know, when he, after, after a while, he, not, at a moment, he, you know, is old enough. You know, is more mature and he can he can handle all that pressure and he should perform. There he is, Vincent Ho, the rider of Winning Dream. But we're going to keep with Winning Dream and now Paul and go back to have a look at his track work. Not right in saying last season, he worked really strongly too mm. before he won it uh, about 50 to 1. Yeah, he did. And you can see him here. He's in the blue saddlecloth, so just ignore those at the bottom. But he just ran away from his, um, his partner there, stand up. It's just the way he accelerates on the all weather, I think he's going to be well suited by it. And you think with his pedigree coming out of a, a Dane Hill mare and whatnot and going back through the, the pedigree there, that he would handle the all weather service. I don't see it being a problem at all. You've always been a fan since day one too, haven't you? Yeah, it wasn't on at 50 to 1 though. <laughs> All right, we move on to one of your favourite horses, Paul, in Campione. And we're going to the all-weather last time. And there he is up on the pace where he does race well. Also in this field of Silver Fig, he will be at the opposite end. We've got We the South, who would prefer Happy Valley and a Grateful Heart on the extreme outside. Can Campione get an easy enough lead to hold off a horse like Silver Fig Lace? I think he can. Um, look, he's unbeaten on the all-weather, isn't he? He's two from two. Uh, he should be he should be leading this uh, field easy enough. He's got Zach Purton uh, riding it for the first time as well. A winning dreamer won't take him on. Uh, we the self's a possibility, but he's such a sort of a free front runner. I think he can lead all the way. Yeah, he certainly can. I think he can as well. You can see Silver Figgy battled on OK there. His last win was off 90. He actually won in this grade. So it was a Class 2 race last year over 1,200 metres at this meeting, fresh too. So we know his prowess fresh. Off to the turf here, Tom. This is Majestic Star. This was his first up run at Shah 10. He ends up running fifth here behind Fantastic Treasure. He won't mind the surface switch because he has won on the dirt previously. And that was five starts ago. He's shown he's relatively versatile, winning on the all weather and then going to Happy Valley and uh, winning a race there in class uh, two as a, a favourite uh, over uh, Keep You Warm. He was sort of midfield this uh, day and he boxed on well enough. We know it's a, a strong field pull with fantastic treasure. I'm a single man. Uh, Navas too, he goes around on the, the final race. So he comes out of a, a good form race. He does, doesn't he? And look, I think he can um, perform pretty well here. I've included him as well. Um, no fears of the surface with that win being on. Up to China we go now, Paul, and this is our last replay. Grateful Heart is the horse up outside the speed. He's had that stable change mentioned earlier. What did you make of this trial on the turf? I mean, the trial was OK here on the turf, but we're coming to the all-weather now. He's had two goes on the all-weather in the past. He's best as a minor placing. Look, I prefer him at Happy Valley. He's got a new trainer. He was with Danny Shum, uh, now with Chris So, and so he's put on 58 uh, pounds over the, the breakers as uh, well, and you can see him. He was OK there in that uh, trial, but I'm, I'm happy to look elsewhere with him, uh, with him coming into this. All right, thank you, boys. That is the breakdown of the first race we preview here, race number three. You're a Campione man, so surely he's on top. Yeah, he is. I think he can lead all the way, uh, Campione. So uh, straight to the front for him. He's on top. Winning Dreamer, the danger, though. Uh, a bit of an unknown on the surface, but we've seen the track work. We've seen him trial well on it. And the deep fields have gone well on the um, surface here in Hong Kong. Uh, Majestic Star, another winner on it. And uh, Silver Fig, who does go well fresh, he'll be running on late in the small field. 2-1-6-4. Same four numbers, but uh, just a switcheroo with uh, third and uh, fourth. But uh, Campione clearly on top for uh, Tony Cruz and Zach Pert. And uh, he'll be the quickest horse out of the gates. And uh, he just might run them ragged here. Uh, winning Dreamer, main danger. Silver Fig kill with his fresh record. A majestic star off the back of that uh, good run last start. So 2-1, 4 and 6. Should have mentioned too that our special guest from the coverage last weekend returns Sylvester de Souza back race riding at Chartin on Sunday. We take a break here on Racing to Win. There's a hot race to have a look at after this. It's Race 10 coming up. Welcome back to Racing to Win. Before we go on, a reminder about Hong Kong Direct this week with uh, Nick Child. Nick catches up with Leviathan owner Mark Chan who has horses in Hong Kong and right around the world. You'll know the colours, they're mauve, they're yellow and they're white and uh, they've been winning up a storm. So we hear from Mark and Zach Purton joins Nick too to talk about California Spangles next start, which is not too far away. You can find that on the website hkjc.com and click on audio and video and then to Hong Kong Direct.
We'll click on to race number 10 now here, and it's a great race coming up. It's a class two over 1,400 metres and has a Silver Express having his first start since the Group 3 Premier Cup. The Golden Scenery carries 11 pounds less for Angus's claim. The Irishman, fifth in the Derby last time, has a cross nose band going on. CP Brave, his win was first up. Packing victory had Mukas after resuming with that third behind Good Luck Friend. Wider draw for Sylvestra. Navas too will like the step up in trip from the 12 to the 1400 metres. Got a patchy pass, his best form has been on the all weather. And the likely favourite, Galaxy Witness, unbeaten in two goes over 1400 metres. He returns for the first time since the 12th of June. What a field here, Tom. Who are the big winners and who are the big losers on the speed map? Yeah, well, it's a strong race. It should be a, a good form race going forward to this one for the season. Uh, Silver Express uh, can go forward. Uh, Sorvest, uh, he's probably got to, to go forward with Luke Ferraris from Barrier 13. And then uh, horses on the three wide line there, CP Brave, California Deep Shot, and also Keefe Paul, who's come up with Barrier 14. Spirited Express should get a good run from two. Yeah, he should. He's got a little bit of pace, hasn't he? And the Irishman from Barrier 1, he's... He normally gets back the Irishman since he's been in Hong Kong, but he has raced handily uh, in New Zealand before he got here. And the favourite, likely favourite, Galaxy Witness should get a nice one. He is where we're going to start, Galaxy Witness. We haven't seen him for a while. The man that knows him best is his trainer, Casper Founds. Casper, Galaxy Witness returns to the races uh, on Sunday. Plenty of, uh, of anticipation around his return. Um, how happy have you been with his, his preparation? Yeah, it's, uh, he's had a lovely prep leading into his first run. He's a lovely big horse and, uh, you know, we're expecting big things for him this season. So uh, he's ready to go to the races. Got a lovely gate, gate three, lightweight. And, you know, I'm sure he's going to be competitive, even though he's up against a pretty handy field. Uh, I believe he's a handy horse. He certainly has looked it. Um, leading up to this race, you've given him three trials, two down here, obviously in Hong Kong, one up at Chung Fok. Was that always by design? Yeah, look, we, we felt uh, he's a big horse, you know, he just needed a bit of that blowout last week and uh, he's come through it nicely and uh, yeah, so it's a nice, nice starting race for us at 1400 and we're obviously hopeful to pick up the distance with him this prep and see how, how far we can take him. Under the conditions of this race, lightweight, Matthew Chadwick's been booked, um, has he been happy with, with what he's felt? Yeah, absolutely. His trial was good the other day, the track yeah. was... You know, it was a rain-affected track, was we just sat on him quietly, but uh, he pretty much towed him to the to the line nicely. They were finished about five, six horses in a row together, but, uh, you know, uh, on face value, the trial was very pleasing. He's pulled up good, and, uh, you know, there's no reason why we can't be very competitive first up. Uh, just reflecting on his, his first season, obviously, which is which is very good, I, I guess the sort of the final run was perhaps, you know, a little bit below par for what he'd shown. Um, was that just a case of perhaps, you know, that one run, just sort of, you know, him coming to the end of the, the preparation a little bit? I, I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, he'd been up for a long time, you know, he won those four races in a row and then we stepped him up to the mile and, uh, you know, it's nice to see that, that, that race form frank by that mm. uh, Viva St. Paul's coming out and winning uh, first up this season. So uh, it shows that the, the race was uh, pretty strong. You know, he looked to be a winning chance at the 200 that day and he just sort of had enough, you know. Yeah. So he's had a good summer break. He's freshened up nice, and we're we're going to get campaign him for, for big things this season. Yeah, a couple of additional boosters. I think looking great was down the field and Bourbon Air as well. So exactly. Really yeah, good. Form um, strong. You must be happy with the way your team is going at, at the moment. Um, the winners continue to float. Your four-year-olds are, are in very good form. So we saw Big Me recently winning Ices another. So yeah. I guess plenty of confidence coming into this race. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Hong Kong is like anything. Uh, these horses once they start to get into this environment they toughen up a bit and then we always find their second season you know if they've shown you something in their first prep they'll normally go on with it in their second season so uh, that's what we're hoping that we can have a big season this year and, and see how far we can go uh, just with perhaps one or two of your, your slightly older horses we saw senor toba here this morning um you mentioned to me that he's he's due to have a run soon are you, are you happy with that trial today yeah extremely happy you know 1200 meters um he was strong through the line um Pulled up beautiful. He'll start off at a mile and we'll just keep building him up and concentrating on the group one in December. I think he's uh, he's gone to the next level this season, you know. Uh, again, he's shown us last season how competitive he can be winning a group three and, and, and sort of running close in the group one. But uh, he's a different horse this season and he can only improve, I think, in the next 12 to 18 months. There's no doubt in my mind. I've trained some good horses that he's definitely a group one horse.
and winner of that trial we just saw is the impressive Lucky Sway Ness. But Galaxy Witness Thomas, who we talk about, he's had the three trials. What have you made of them? We saw that one in the rain on the all weather. Yeah, the trial looked too good um, last time out. He had every chance, I thought, last time out. That was up to 1,600 metres and he failed there. And horses on that particular program were winning, um, I think, on the fence that day as well. So maybe he just got worse at the track, Paul. But his breeding, I don't know if he'd get 1,600 metres. Yeah, that's the query. I mean, the uh, was pretty confident they're going to step him up and have, have the crack anyway. A good, really good starting point. It's a tough race, no question whatsoever. He's got himself into, but this is the a good test for him. Barry number three should get himself into a nice position, and uh, only been beaten once, as we saw there. He has. All right. So that's Galaxy Witness. There's plenty of others that uh, can take him on, including Sylvester packing victory. Spirited Express and the Golden Scenery, Paul, come out of this. Who are we taking? I quite like the Golden Scenery, just with the printer's claim. It just, you know, he carried, had to carry the big weight, 135 last time, and ran on nicely here, I thought. Uh, this is over the 1,400 metres. He stays the distance. He's, he's run second up pretty well in the past when he got back. Uh, and with this 11 pounds difference, he's going to come in with 124 I think he might be the forgotten horse in the race. He might come up a bit of a price. He might be, and so you can see Sylvester, he was staying on, but he's got a, a tricky draw to overcome. Both of Frankie's has got tricky draws to overcome. And look, packing victory was quite good there. He's been back to the trial since and uh, was third in that trial too. He was. This is Navas too, uh, Tom. This is over 1,200 metres. He's recalled much better over the trip of Sunday's race. Yeah, so he's going to enjoy it uh, here second up. And he was quite a lot further forward last time out, so I just wonder if that was to his liking or not. But uh, he'll be further back, I expect, uh, from barrier number 11 uh, this time round. Around uh, Navas uh, too, and we saw him to very good effect. Paul last season, second up. Yeah, definitely. Look, he's got to go, and he's such a consistent horse. This was another strong race he came out of, and I'm sure they will ride him a bit more quieter. This horse, Paul, you identified early on on his arrival in Hong Kong, the Irishman, not seen since the Derby. What have you made of his trials? The trials have been good, and look, his best runs have been when he's fresh as well. Or his best run, I thought, was when he was fresh up. So. This might be the, the time to uh, catch him. Uh, Zach Purden's jumped aboard as well. He's got the cross, cross nose been on. Barry one. The only thing with him is he, he doesn't settle in the mornings. He just pulls a little bit. But uh, with these horses around him, he looked nice and quiet there, and I thought the trial was good. Yeah, and they rode him fairly positive in that mm. trial too. He was up on the, the pace there, so maybe they used gate number one to their advantage this time uh, round. Um, Zach Purden was on board there in the uh, trial. You can see Beauty Fit there in the, the trial as well. He's dropped a lot of weight, 36 pounds. CP Brave is another one, Tom, who has raced best first up because that's when his win came. This is a trial on the all-weather, beating at Shenzhou 12. Well, he's the opposite to Beauty Fit. He's up £39 uh, here as CP Brave. Just battled last uh, time out in a, a small field behind uh, the rock, but with the De Souza on, he seemed to go to the line quite nicely in this trial. Yeah, it was good. So Lyle will ride him on race day. He's got barrier 10. But I think that's just going to be a bit awkward for him because if he does go forward, he could be trapped wide. Frankie Law told us on Hong Kong Direct a few weeks ago, this is a horse to follow from his stable, Keefe, a bit like Galaxy Witness, Paul. Very strong race to return in and barrier 14. He's got the, he's got the wide draw, but look, he's going well, this horse. Uh, Keefe thought the trial was really good. Um, Sylvester is a soldier aboard. He's only had the four starts, but he's looked good in all four. He has. He did win from Barry number 14. Uh, two runs ago over a escape route as a, a favourite. And like the way he lengthened in this uh, trial without being uh, squeezed uh, too much, he hit the line really well there. So I think he's certainly a, a horse to follow going forward, uh, Keefe. Barrier 14 is, is tricky, but um, he's good enough to overcome it. He's a nice horse in the making. He carries £11 pounds less too than the last time we saw him on race day. Great race to finish the programme, Paul. Who wins it? Look, I'm going to go for my each way value in this race. He's currently at uh, 11s as um, the golden scenery. I think he'll be a double figure price. I just like the fact he's got that weight off his back and second up. The Irishman, he's fresh up. He's uh, hard to, um, this is the best time to catch him and the trial was good. Galaxy Witness looked really good uh, as well last season. And Navis too is a fantastic race to finish on. But I ended up, who do you leave out? I ended up with 2, 4, 14 and 9. It's a race where you wouldn't want anything less than sort of two to one about anything in this race. It's very, very strong. And I ended up going with the Keefe here. He's at 12 and two at the moment for Frankie Law. Highly rated from the stable and good enough to overcome barrier 14, fresh up. Uh, he just needs some cover and hopefully he's running on at the end. Galaxy Witness with the lightweight, uh, the Irishman and Navas too. So seven, 14, four and nine. Super field. Have four picks and you might have missed the winner three times over because there are chances everywhere in race number 10.
All right, the races we've previewed here, Paul, races three and ten on the show. What about outside of that? Who do we like? Yeah, well, I think Zach Purden's going to have a really good day. I, I like uh, quite a few of his mounts throughout the card. I think he can start the, the, the uh, day off nicely with the Yes We Can, a horse on the all-weather. A Thunderstrike in race number two, he's got the apprentice claim as well, and he really likes the all-weather surface. Um, also, War Weapon, who's been downgraded. This will be his second start in Class 4. Uh, Lyle Hewitson, I think, is a good booking for him because I think the horse can go forward. Uh, All is good. Another one, uh, Zach's ride, he's another one that can go forward. And Handsome 12 as well. He's going back to your weather. He was a bit unlucky on the turf last time. thought Red Desert, uh, back on the all-weather over the 1,200 metres, uh, looks good for him. And Circuit 9, who's unbeaten, two from two in Griffin Company. So, all in all, it's a good card. There's some good betting um, heats right throughout. Just before we get your best bets and the like, um, Circuit 9, what have you made of his trials, Paul and Tom? Because they have looked a little bit average. Yeah, they are average. But if you remember when he debuted in Hong Kong, it was an average trial going on to him. He was a big price and he won really well. I think he's a guy that, he's a horse that saves himself for a race day. Yeah, I was about to say the same. His trials leading into his first couple of runs were pretty ordinary and he's not shown too much up at Chung Fa, so we'll see what he can produce. He was 1.2 favourite last time. He was, and those uh, race analysis on hkjc.com, audio and video, race by race stuff there. Best bet please, Paul. Yeah, we're going to go with a, a Zach Purton mount here and Handsome 12, back on the all weather. I think he's going to get the perfect run from Barrier 5 and he'd be tough to beat. And Golden Scenery, look, just looking for some value in that last race. It's such an open race. Uh, he should be a double figure price and uh, with that uh, printer's claim. And I think this is a really good uh, Quinella Quinella place in race three with winning dreamer Campioni and Majestic Start. You would say that. Going with uh, Kefi race uh, 10, number seven uh, here for uh, De Souza. He's got a tricky barrier draw to overcome 14, but he might come up at each way price in the end. Uh, Kefi, triumphant return. He comes to Shartin for the first time. Been running on his last couple of runs, Matthew. Uh, Chadwick drawn nicely for uh, Frankie Law there as well. Race five, number four. And the play in the last with uh, those three, four, seven and 14, the Irishman, Kefi and Galaxy Witness. Race seven, number six, Indigenous Realm. Good draw, barrier three. He hasn't had much luck with draws. Last time he drew in was barrier five, three starts ago, and he won over the 1,400 metres. Eight trigrams was a three-time winner last season. Good draw, gets a weight allowance for Jack Wong. Has had a stable change and joined the Mi Choi Barn. And the QQP play of the day, race seven, three wide blue yonder, six Indigenous Realm, and ten all is good, three, six and ten. That has been Racing to Win Good, dual course program coming up on Sunday. Then we're back to Happy Valley next Wednesday night, Tom. Yeah, we've got to Class 2, 1650, the main event. Uh, Telecom Fighters, uh, Berlin Tango, everyone's delight, far, far. Uh, Jumbo Fortune there as well, Paul, and another three Class 5s. Yeah, so a uh, nine race card again. To, uh, so plenty of bidding opportunities on Wednesday night. We will preview that show on Tuesday. That has been Racing to Win. We will see you at Chartin for the first of 10 at 1 o'clock.